Do you want to know a really simple method of upping your club head speed and ultimately hitting longer drives? In today's video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how your grip can affect your club head speed and also how it can help you hit the ball a lot further. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf. So the fact that you want to hit longer drives, there's a couple of things that you can do and it's almost a little bit of a cheat code here because you don't need to be thinking about grip position too much. We all know grip position can be very, very important for direction. So if you have a strong grip with the left hand on top there, that has a tendency to shut the club face down. Obviously, you're not going to hit the desired shots you want if you do shut the face down. It's going to go low left. If you have a weak grip where the left hand sits underneath, the right hand sits on top, ultimately that's the opposite. The face generally opens and that's the weakest of the driver shots. You generally see a big high weak one to the right, especially if you come across the ball as well. One of the biggest things we see when teaching people who struggle with driver is a weak grip and an over the top swing path which is ultimately a bit of a slice or a block slice. Now, what about grip pressure? Because grip pressure is something that's really interesting. We cover it quite a lot, but people generally get it wrong. They grip it far too firm. So you'll see here that I'm gripping this at a kind of nine out of 10. That really restricts my takeaway. It really restricts how not only my wrists can move, but also how my forearms can set. So if you just weaken that off just a little bit, by weaken, I don't mean turn it, I mean keep it nice and neutral. In an ideal world, I'd like to see it a little bit stronger than neutral. I'd like to see a couple of knuckles on top here, the right hand maybe a tiny bit underneath. That can allow you to bow the wrist or impact, square the club face up, and ultimately deal off that club head. But if you have the right grip pressure, you can set that club on the way back. You can point if you have a golf pad or a Lampkin logo on your grip towards your sternum. From there, you can load up to the top of the backswing and then rotate through get that little bit of bowing in the wrist. You can see that I've got a tiny bit of forward shuffling, but because that ball position is correct, I'm still gonna deal off that club head. I'm still working up onto that ball, and that's gonna allow me to create a lot more speed through impact. So imagine this, imagine if I have the hands in the perfect position. Guys, Chris has also got a little bit of a bonus tip for you in a few seconds time, but the grip in the right position, the grip at the right tension, I can set that club on the way back, and then on the way through as I rotate down and get that club releasing properly, the club just releases itself almost as I rotate my body. I don't have to physically try and release that club. I don't have to physically try and add loft to that club because then I'm probably gonna duff it and then I'm gonna top it and then it's just not gonna go where you want to hit the ball. So in an ideal world, we're gonna get the right grip position, we're gonna get the right grip pressure. We're also gonna put the fingers in quite an interesting position. It's not gonna sit firmly in the hands here. It's almost like if you were holding a hammer and you were trying to hammer a nail down, you wouldn't put the hammer right in the middle of your hand here because then you'd have to really work all the muscles in your arm. You'd put the hammer where you're gonna put the golf club in the fingers. That way you can have a little bit more leverage. You can use that lever system to help create hammer speed, I suppose you call it, or club head speed when it comes to golf. So all of a sudden, the grip's in the right place, I've got the right pressure, and it's also now in the fingers, it's not in the palms, I'm not having to try and set the club here. That is a surefire way of you hitting longer drives, and we haven't even given you the bonus point yet. Oh, look at that! That's the first swing of the day as well. That is incredible. Grip pressure, grip position, get it in the fingers, you are guaranteed to hit longer drives, promise. So great points there from James, and you'll see from James's points, it's one of the biggest hitters on the tour still. Really? He's one of the oldest oh, sorry, people on tour, which is Padraig Harrington. So this is something that we saw on one of his videos. Again, he grips it nice and light. There's a couple other bonus things that he does to generate as much speed for the age he is. Yes, he's not 70 years old, but in regards, he's playing on the seniors tour. Unfortunately, he did lose out uh, in a major the other week. But again, even one of the longest hitters on the regular tour. So we see from him what he will do well is get all the speed down at the golf ball. Because what we see from most amateurs is their speed is all lost in this position here. We start to cast it. We start to throw the arms. That's it. All the speed's gone. We come into impact like this. There's no pressure on the golf ball. There's no speed. We lost all the speed in this part of the golf swing. So two things that he does. So one thing that he does first is a step drill. So he gets his nice light grip pressure. He's also then working on his sequence. So he makes some swings, he steps through, and a lot of people relate this to Happy Gilmore. So again, what he did, but it's encouraging your sequence. It's getting the body moving in the way that we need to optimize your speed. 
So one thing that you can do when you get to a driving range, if you don't want to do that, or if you're on the first tee, we want to start getting the speed out at the ball. Pop your driver upside down, and what you could do as a warm up on the first tee whilst you're waiting, is make some swings as fast as you can, but we're trying to get the sound and the speed down here at the golf ball. I don't want to hear that all the speed is here. I want to feel like that. I'm going to swing as fast as possible in balance, but the speed is where I release that club. So we are releasing this club. We're not trying to hold it off. So like James mentioned, your sequence will come in. We can release that club head, but we've still got a little bit of forward shuffling. We're releasing it. The club obviously then is traveling the fastest it can do, and we're going to be able to hit longer drives. And that's the key thing of why Padre Carrington is one of the longest hitters out there. Everything is down at the golf ball. So if I put that into play now, I'm going to get my nice light grip pressure. I'm going to see two knuckles like James mentioned. And then from here, I'm really feeling that I'm in balance as fast as I can. And the speed is at the golf ball. And you'll see in balance there. Comes off with a nice flight just up the right hand side, drawing back. But we can see everything you've done in your practice so on the tee when you're warming up you're trying to think about speed you've got your light grip pressure especially when you turn the club upside down obviously you've not got as much to grip we don't need to try and strangle it doesn't allow you to do that it's nice and light and start to hear the sound down at the golf ball this is the same with your irons we still want to be doing the same we want to be getting the speed down at the golf ball not losing everything up here and that's what we start to see and that is where you're going to lose distance if you start to get a tight grip pressure like james mentioned what we're going to start to see is that yes you can't set your wrist very well on the way back because we're strangling that and then from on the way down everything comes from your arms and hands so we'll either come over the top and hit that slice or a lot of people will try and lean back if you're somebody who tops the ball catches it very low or sends it very high with the driver and you don't really get any pressure on the golf ball these are the things you need to think about go back to setup right at setup what is maybe costing me speed and distance am i strangling that golf club we all get the first tee nerves we all get on there and think right i just want to get this down there because there's quite a few guys on the terrace i've got barry and dave playing with me and we want to make sure that i hit it past them we strangle it let's start to get a little bit looser let's get that routine let's go okay go through my setup in over the ball right i know my ball position is correct my grip now is a little bit stronger with that left hand but it's nice and light let that club do the work and start to help you get good at golf your tee went forward does that mean it's a good shot it does mean it's a good shot yeah that's what you want be the ball oh look at that that's the first swing of the day as well that is incredible. 